All right, we are officially live for our Wednesday afternoon chat. It's me, Mike, from Silver Doctors, as well as Pal Half Dollar joining us uh, for a little afternoon back and forth. Looking forward to finding out uh, what's on your mind, but more importantly, I got a question that I want to put out there. And as you guys can tell from the name, from the title of this video here, it's going to be in reference to if you were given the option by your employer to be compensated in medals, would you choose to do so? So we're going to put that out there and see what you guys think about that and also get you get our take on that. And then also, Paul has a couple topics from some things that's happened recently in the news that we're going to cover. And so uh, let's get into it. So, Paul, thanks for joining us again or thanks for connecting with me again here on the uh, live on air with Silver Doctors. Yes, thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. That's a great question that you're uh, posing today. And uh, I think it's very interesting because I look at it from the manipulation standpoint. Mm -hmm. So my answer, right, would I rather have my employer pay me in gold or silver right now? Mm -hmm. As it stands right now, my answer would be no. Right. And the reason it would be no is because, well, what if I've got my car payment that's due on the third of the month, mm -hmm. right? And then my next paycheck's coming up and they just hit silver for $2 or they hit gold for a hundred bucks, yeah. right? Yeah. Then all of a sudden I don't have enough money to make my car payments, yeah. right? <laughs> but that said, I do believe in saving in gold and silver, right? Mm -hmm. Because that way, you know, the manipulation is real, you know, the smashes are coming. Mm -hmm. So, so, you know, as soon as they're dropping the price, I can convert a little bit of my savings into gold and silver. Mm -hmm. And then once the price rises again, I can cash in on those savings. And since the federal reserve won't allow any interest to be paid on savings account, mm -hmm. I can pay myself interest by taking advantage of the price rises when they happen. Yeah. So that's my take on it. Yeah. And then furthermore, I'm a big believer in the gold and silver standard. So mm -hmm. yes, one day I do believe firmly that we will in fact be paid in gold and silver and that will be everybody. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And so I, I personally, I'm kind of torn in between what I would rather prefer, but yet I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind in the short term, just experiment with the format. So my biggest thing would be before I wouldn't definitely want to receive all compensation in the form of metals, but I wouldn't mind having some um, allocated into a direct savings on my behalf. And so I'm not sure if you're 80, 20 split or whatever the split up might be, but I would, I wouldn't be opposed to receiving some compensation in metals that I know would go directly towards some type of saving in the vault somewhere. And then I'll of course get the rest of that in fiat currency just because it, you know, we need it uh, to spend right away. So uh, mm -hmm. as more people join us, uh, I want to definitely put the question out there again. So just something to get us started this afternoon, the question uh, that I wanted to put out there and get your thoughts on uh, the viewers is that if you were given an option to receive compensation uh, as far as your income from your employer via metals, would you choose to do so or what type of uh, ways would you like to either receive it or not? So let us know in the chat and more importantly, whatever else you might be on your mind, feel free to do so. Definitely want to find out uh, what's what's going on out there. And so, mm -hmm. before, you know, Mike, you yeah. bring up a good point. Let me interrupt you really no, go quick. Ahead. No problem. Go ahead. When you're talking about an 80-20 split or say 90-10 or 95-5 yeah. or 70-30, whatever the split is, I think that's great because that is basically instilling the discipline to save, right? Mm -hmm. That's what America needs. We need to be savers, mm -hmm. right? Not just spending every single penny to our name and then some. Right. Um, that said, I also like the fact that if you save in gold and silver, physical gold and silver, pay in cash mm -hmm. at the store, right? Because you're yeah. handing over those bills. Yeah. Well, if you have gold and silver saved at home, you have to think three times about it because now you have to actually do a little bit of extra work and sell that gold and silver mm -hmm. to get those fiat dollars to buy whatever it is that you need to buy. Yeah. So I think the saving is a great idea, especially if there could be some sort of automatic saving mm -hmm. where it's going into there out of that paycheck every month. I mean, that would be awesome. Yeah, I That's agree. That's a great point. Yeah. Now watch this. Even even take it even further. What what I believe would possibly uh, be something of interest, and what could be in the works uh, of having it to where I, I know of of a, of a of a of a certain like a debit card, credit card that's backed by metals type of thing. And so I believe the whole uh, credit card slide of things or debit cards backed by metals is going to be going to become very popular really soon. And so imagine if you received your compensation um, in a certain weight. Like, you know, how have you were able to allocate, you know, whether it be gold, silver or, or you know, balance it out. But yet that that was the, the today's price of it now in your paycheck, whatever that weight equated to in your paycheck, deposited to a vault 
and then you had a credit card or debit card that you could use to then transact with or whatnot. Do you see that being a way to possibly and in, in, in even further the, the, the need for saving in metals as well as getting us back to using metals in, in day-to-day transactions, even though we're not using it physically, we're using it off of a card to where if you don't have any metals in a vault, you can't swipe your card and get anything off of it. Do you think, do you think that could be a possibility as an option? Yeah, and, and there are options out there today, right? Mm-hmm. And if it's not a card, it's also you know a vaulting service where you could sell it back too, yeah. just yeah. as easily and get it wired. If you're talking about even a larger amount of money yeah. that a debit card or credit card wouldn't be able to handle for a transaction. So yeah, I do see that as a good way. Um, and the, but the, my only problem with it, like I said, is just you know the manipulation's coming. Mm-hmm. So you know even if it's based in weight, if there if you know like last year was brutal, right? Mm-hmm. Last year mm-hmm. you know we went from what was it? We could never really get above seventeen fifty in silver, mm-hmm. and we dropped down below fourteen dollars at one point. So, yeah. you know, there comes a point where that's the sticking point in my eyes. Yeah, I mm-hmm. agree, hundred percent. So, we got a couple people in the chat. Let's find out what's going on. So, I'll go over there and welcome a couple people. We have John uh, Semeni. Welcome. It says no price fluctuations too much. It says so. His his thought is no, the price fluctuates too much. I love my gold and silver though, so he's not yeah. one that would want to be receiving compensation in it. Then we got right, Alpine. That's my, that was my point. Yeah. Yeah. Alpine says, if I could get paid tax free, I'd do it. So that 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 changes a complete angle there. So if your metals had no uh, taxation whatsoever on them, would you would, would that change your interest in probably being compensated in metals? In regard, regardless of the price. Would, I think that would change a lot of people's uh, interest in it because you know. Um, not that I'm saying one thing either way, whether you should or shouldn't pay taxes or whether it's right or wrong. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying if the government can either get in the way or get out of the way, if you can do something where the government is not in your way, I yeah. think that that's a viable option. Yeah. So if me, if I'm doing some yard work for somebody, mm-hmm. sure, you know, pay me in some silver, pay yeah. me in some gold. Or if I'm painting somebody's house, mm-hmm. sure, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. you know, because that's a private transaction between two individuals and it's nobody else's business. Yeah. Um, so I think that that's that's all. Now with the employer, it's different, right? Because mm-hmm. then you're talking about you know all the different taxes and everything. But right. but yeah, definitely, I think that is something that would change, especially if we went to like one of the consumption based taxes, right? right? Then that would be you know totally a valid option. Yeah, I agree, hundred percent. So it says, uh, Smug Man says they would uh, absolutely fix the price of metals, just like back in the day when money was backed yeah. by a metal currency. So, yes, see, mm-hmm, yeah, mm-hmm. it says if I can get a hundred dollar gold eagle, this is from John again. If I get a hundred dollar gold eagle for the face value and rest and the rest in paper each week, <laughs> so how about <laughs> so how about if you got your compensation in actual the paper price of the metal? <laughs> and so, I personally, as I mentioned before, will play around with a small portion of it just with that you know credit card, debit card feature. But I think you know, I, I personally wouldn't want to receive all of it as well. So <laughs> and this this brings up another thing I just want to mention real quick, throw out there. This is why the Mexican Libertad is an awesome silver coin, mm-hmm. because it is the only sovereign government coin that is based on weight and not based on a face value, right? Mm-hmm. One ounce gold eagle has a $50 face value. One ounce silver coin has a $1 face value. Five in Canada, you know, it depends what, what country. Mm-hmm. But Mexico is just based on a weight. So it would fluctuate its value based on the price of silver at any given point in time. Mm-hmm. Um, so just, just to throw that out there as well. Yeah, that's very interesting. And so because people say, what is the correct price? Well, until that correct price is settled upon, you don't have to worry about a fixed value on it because it's based on that weight and not the price, which is how it should be. Yeah. Yeah. A good point there. Now to take it even further, <laughs> someone mentioned that, uh, they've gotten paid in cryptocurrency and it's the easiest thing ever. So of course I, <laughs> I know, you know, <laughs> we might as well touch that. But yeah, that's something that we can probably touch on as well because a lot of the younger generation, because of the ease of transferring and just the swipe of a QR code, do you, do you, do you foresee that becoming more of a uh, preferred method of payment in the days ahead over over any type of transactions with precious metals? Um, well, I think it's for crypto. No, I mean I have a different point of view. I mm-hmm. think that you know developed by the NSA, backdoors, mm-hmm. you know, all of these things, right? It's yeah. basically. You know, it's that walled garden where you're closing people in and forcing them to a certain system. Yeah. But um, as far as the electronic side of it, yes, absolutely. You know, and you see that you've got, um, you know, companies like I think it's called Zoom or Zoom or like 
XOOM or something like that. We can send mm -hmm. money internationally, you know, and it only takes an hour. It's instantaneous. The fees are low. Yeah. So that so it's the point that is it's sending the money digitally. That's mm -hmm. what's what's what matters more than what exactly is that money. Right now it's fiat. Could be gold or silver if it's one of the debit cards or credit cards. Yeah. Could be crypto, you know, depending how you've got your wallet set up and what you're doing with it. Yeah. But the point is that yes, it's that convenience factor that's not going away anytime at all soon. Yeah, yeah, I agree 100. percent And I think uh, it, it will be great in the days ahead, especially as things become more obvious as to how the true state of our global economy that people were presented with options. And so I think that's that plays into a lot of. I'm hearing more and more about the you know the the crypto adoption push that's being put in front of us, whether we want to, you know, accept it or not, it's being pushed in front of our face. And so not much, much not much news or, or push for adoption as far as actually putting gold and silver back into the hands of the people to do transactions with because of, I guess, the archaic nature of that particular asset class, even though it's money and everything else compared to it is a derivative of some kind. But yet the idea of people walking around with, with coins in their pocket again doesn't seem likely. So I'm, I, I'm really confident that the crypto nature and the and the metals will connect one day to make it so that people can actually be either be compensated or do transactions immediately and instantaneously, but have the confidence backed by gold. So and so like the I guess the you know the dollar used to be labeled as good as gold. So eventually they may have cryptos that are I guess labeled as, as good as metals or whatever they try to come up with as a yeah. slogan. <laughs> Yeah, and I'm actually pro cryptocurrency yeah. as long as it's backed by gold and silver, yeah. right? So I yeah. have no problem with cryptocurrency. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, so everybody, welcome to the SD Silver Doctors uh, live on air afternoon stream. My name is Mike, and then we got Paul Half Dollar here. So for those, all those that are joining us, don't be afraid to give us a thumbs up in the comment or the, the little button beneath the screen. Give us a thumbs up, show your support for the channel. More importantly, whatever questions you have, either on topic or off topic, feel free to uh, chime in via chat and let us know, and we would love to get that uh, answered or share our thoughts on it. And so we got something here. It says from from Lena. It says, uh, "Use your thousand dollars American dividend each month <laughs> from Andrew Yang for President 2020. Buy your medals." And so <laughs> I have not heard that one. Is this a uh, Democratic front runner that's proposing uh, yeah. UBS or something? Yeah. So UBI. So okay. So Andrew Yang. Of course, I, I've heard. I've gotten a lot of questions on that particular person, as well as his. I guess his his greatest proposal is. Uh, the uh, it's, I think it's called the, the pa American Patriotic Dividend or something like that. He labeled it. It's basically U UBI, Universal Basic Income, where he proposed to give a thousand dollars a month to everybody above eighteen years old, and they would receive those funds from taxing the WalMarts, the Amazons of the world, of which you know, as he say, they can afford it since they don't pay any uh, um, income tax or or any tax period on their on their operations. Uh, so that's kind of what that's, that's gaining momentum. And then also, you know, about, you know, Elizabeth Warren, free, this free healthcare, free, this free college tuition, free, 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 free. So between, you know, the, the, so it looks like the whole democratic stance this year and moving forward, will be giving something free. So and this, this yeah. is a perfect transition to one thing that I wanted to talk about today yeah, because, yeah. and it has to do with this whole student, you know, debt crisis, this mm -hmm. college tuition costs skyrocketing, yeah. and just simply the free stuff. Yeah. Because here's how it works, right? Let's use the GI Bill as an example. Um, I don't know the exact amount. It's somewhere around 25000 like twenty three five or something like mm -hmm. that, that mm -hmm. they'll pay a year, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but let's assume it's $25,000. Um, and somebody just got out of the Army and they want to use their GI Bill and they want to go to a two-year vocational school to learn HVAC, heating, plumbing, or something like that, yeah. okay? So what happens is the government says, you know, like in the UBI case, we're going to give everybody $1,000 a month. Well, now we're talking college. So in the college case, the government says, we're going to pay colleges up to $25,000 a year. Mm -hmm. So the vocational school says, great, this is awesome. We support our troops. We love our veterans. What we're going to do is we're going to charge $30,000 a year, and then we're going to give them a $5,000 discount but what they're doing is ensuring that they get the absolute maximum that the government is willing to give every year. So then the government sees that and they say, oh, well, now, you know, 
college tuition costs are going up. Well, we're going to have to give a little bit more money. So now we're going to have to give 27,500 a year. Yeah. So the school says, Oh, that's great. Well, um, you know, we actually had to raise our tuition. So now we're going to charge 32,500, but we're going to give you a $5,000 discount. So they're <laughs> going to get that 27,500. So every single year, right? The government is increasing what they will pay to the universities. Mm. So every single year, the university is just going to raise their prices. Yeah. So this is the same thing with universal basic income, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. At its very core, it's that moral hazard. If I know everybody else has a $1,000 a month to spend, well, guess what? Inflation is going to ease up in no time. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And, and that, isn't that interesting how, you know, we're, we're that whole narrative of uh, higher learning and the need for a college degree, um, it, it is not really gaining as much uh, or it's not really maintaining the same level of privilege and prestige it used to have. I remember 20 something plus years ago in my era, it was considered a privilege to be able to go to a university to where that was like, you know, especially me growing up in Detroit. It was like, you know, you have to go to college if you want a chance to whatever. And now I'm thinking like everyone is encouraged to go to college. So if everyone goes to college, that that means that they're. That they're 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 gonna be graduating with some type of certificate, hopefully in something they can use. But statistics are showing more people are graduating and even in, in more debt than they're able to actually pay back from the income they earn, and they're not even in the in the field of choice. So, do, do you think that whole college narrative will continue in the next 10, 15 years? Of everyone needs to go to college in order to create a, you know such a, a a life for yourself. Do you think that's gonna remain the case, or could this next little recession, hiccup, whatever people call it, alter our paradigm when it comes to education. I think it will alter the paradigm when it comes to education. And that's something else people don't realize, right, about this free tuition. Mm -hmm. Universities in the 60s were free, right? There was no tuition. Mm -hmm. um, I think, for example, Berkeley, as an example, I don't think they started charging like out-of-state residents until 1950s or something like mm -hmm. that. I'd have to look that up to find out exactly when. But, you know, schools used to be free. Then the government gets involved, and now they're skyrocketing through the roof. And, yes, I do think there will be a shift coming where that four-year traditional, you know, bachelor's degree in basket weaving or whatever it is is not going to matter because, you know, it's skills that a person has that proves their worth, yeah. not whether they can, you know, weave a basket with three different colors mm -hmm. in an hour, you know, because that's not what, you know, college is for. Yeah. Furthermore, the whole education system used to be about, you know, um, and this was when we were in school, right? Mm -hmm. it, and, and I can speak to this because I have kids in school, so I see it every day and mm -hmm. I have to deal with it every day and it's frustrating. Yeah. It used to be about this is what we know. This is what we think we know. These are all the theories that there are in the world. Now prove us wrong. Right. That's what college used to be about. It used to be about learning how to argue. It used to be about this is what we know about rocket science. Tell us where we're wrong and how to make rocket science better. Mm -hmm. Now what it's all about. It's we're going to teach you how to obey the government and how to not question authority. That's yeah. it. Right. Yeah. We're going to teach you how to be good little communists. Everybody's <laughs> a good little communist. So that's why this shift is coming. Yeah. And if you subscribe to the opinion, which I do, that the United States is turning into the third world, mm -hmm. which I think it is, mm -hmm. then, you know, people are going to be working at younger ages, mm -hmm. right? Even kids are going to start entering the workforce again under yeah. the table, of course, yeah. because of all that. And then it's just going to feed on itself where more people are going to realize that the better route in life is without that college degree. And, mm -hmm. let, and, and it's a Ponzi scheme. I mean, yeah. let's be real about it. Yeah. College tuition is a Ponzi scheme. And until these, and how are prices ever going to go down? Because you've got all these posh trust funds with all these posh academics and, and all these you know professors that are tenured, getting mm -hmm. all this great money and got all these research dollars. I mean, college is very, very expensive right now. Yeah, I agree 100%. And so... Uh, <laughs> you said a Ponzi scheme. <laughs> I like that, man. So let's check in with the chat real quick, because as, as always, we can get going back and forth and get caught up in some good uh, dialogue, but yet forget <laughs> we got people. And there's also. one. Timothy Mack is an engineering student and a mechanical engineering University of Idaho. There you go. That's something that you want to study. That yeah. is a good degree. Yeah, and and that's I think even before you get to higher learning, when it, even when it comes into to like just uh, lower levels of education, high school, especially middle school. I'm of the mindset that by now, knowing that uh, high school especially, by the time you leave high school, you spend eight hours a day in school, you should be definitely taking some type of college courses so that by the time you graduate as a senior, you should be qualified to enter the workforce to do something. Not necessarily need to go to a university to get certified with a documentation saying that you graduated in 
as you said, basket weaving or, or, or things like that. So, and then, and then, and then another thing that bothers me the most is that all these additional uh, curriculums and, and career choices they're giving these kids, such as, I, I think, uh, I, you know, not to go even in deep, but I, I, I know of somebody to know of somebody that graduated with a degree in something that I'm thinking, I, I really didn't see the value in it, but it, it's, it's like, it's museum studies. And so they went, they took on student loans to study the history and how to set up art exhibits. And I'm thinking like the only thing you could do is probably work in a museum. And yeah, I'm like, that was, I don't know. So I leave it, I'm gonna leave it at that. But you know, and and via, via chat, I'm curious to find out what are some other studies or, or career pathways that colleges offer that we may not have touched on. Does anybody that's watching this have any studies or field of studies that will be interesting and make you scratch your head and wonder like who would actually allow their kid to go that route. Never let the kid that want to do that. I'm interested in finding out. So let us know in the chat. <laughs> yeah. When I went, when I went, when I worked at, you know, I ran a soup kitchen in Chapel Hill, North Carolina for three and a half years. Mm-hmm. I also worked at the homeless shelter there. Mm-hmm. Right. And you know, the best social workers that were there, you know, weren't social workers in the formal licensed sense. Right. Mm-hmm. Just mm-hmm. like, the best people that I know in finance, you know, don't have finance degrees, yeah, right? Yeah. So, um, yeah, I think there's much to be said about what a person can learn and what a person can accomplish outside of the traditional path of college. Yeah, I, I'm um, a firm believer. And so, like, you know, so what I've, I've had a chance to interview a lot of people, especially younger entrepreneurs. And so there's, I'm not sure if you follow a guy by the name of uh, Gary Vanderchuk. I'm not sure the name. So he's a entrepreneur slash a, a social media mogul. Like he's, you know, he's out there. Everybody pays attention to him because he's he speaks his mind and he uses whatever language he wants. But he talks about entrepreneurship and how we're going to be, everyone's going to be forced into trying to find some type of way to provide for themselves because of the old job paradigm in and of itself is going to have issues. And as we see now with all the layoffs, retail store closing, malls closing, so there's going to be a shift regardless. And he's saying that everyone now, through, especially through social media, if you look at everyone's Instagram page or their Facebook account, it says they are the business owner or they are some type of expert when in actuality they, they just gave themselves that title. And so he's concerned with entrepreneurship, but he thinks that that's going to be the next wave of people taking it upon themselves to basically bring value and produce for themselves. So I think entrepreneurship will end up being the way that people choose to go as opposed to using the old paradigm of going to school, studying and get certified from somebody who probably never even implemented what they even taught you in the first place. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I had a friend at the university of North Carolina who was, you know, going to school for business mm-hmm. and you know, what are you going to do when you get out? You know, I was like, well, I'm going to get into consulting. It's like, you have no business experience. How are you going to get into consulting? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Doing these kids harm, man. All right. So what's going on in the chat? Let's check in. So see if any questions as well as if you guys have any thoughts, feel free to let us know in the chat. And more importantly, you probably want to highlight at Silver Doctor so we'll see it. Because if not, as more people write things, it's hard to get to all the questions. So, uh, so have that. If you thumb through them a little bit, if you see something you want to address, feel free to do so. I'll thumb through on my end for a second. So we've got, got a couple people still talking about medals here. And so for those that are joining us late, the question we start off with was, would you want to be compensated from your employer in medals? So let us know in the chat what you guys think about that. And so it uh, looks like uh, we got corporations will pass on cost to customers, uh, losing proposition. It says, I don't know why, but Andrew Yang, he was even crying about it. AI apparently taking all the half jobs. Okay, so that's another thing. So another part of Andrew Yang's stance is the fact that AI, artificial intelligence, machine learning, robotics, that new ind- that industry will, in the next five, 10 years, disrupt everything that we know now as far as the service sector jobs and i actually saw a uh, was it a video a short little video snippet from a news source saying that walmart are implementing robots on the floor to either clean to restack shelves or whatever which will you know alleviate a lot of jobs and so due to this type of sector here people will be forced out and looking for opportunities anyway. So that's plays into the need for entrepreneurship. But what are your thoughts on uh, this whole transition into robotics and that basically becoming the next form of work for people to where we have candidates now saying that this additional thousand dollars would be helpful because people are going to need it to be creative with. What are your thoughts on that? 
Um, as far as the robots, I think they have them in Home Depot or Lowe's too. Mm -hmm. um, and, it, and it's twofold, right? Because here's the problem, right? Nobody trains employees anymore, mm -hmm. right? Nobody hires experts. So you go into Lowe's or Home Depot, not to, you know, put them on blast, but they don't know anything in there when you ask them questions, you know, mm -hmm. oh, I need a, you know, five eighths of an inch fitting for this copper pipe that I have. Can mm -hmm. you help me out? And they're like, look at you, like you're talking like you're from Mars or something. Yeah. <laughs> so you put the robot in there and that's great. They can help you find that part, but they really can't say, well, you know, that part would go there, but this one will be a little bit better. And let me tell you why a robot can't do that. Yeah. Here's the other thing about AI. I think it's overhyped, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah. when I think about the electric car, right? I mean, they've been designing electric cars since the 1990s, right? You can mm -hmm. Google the, what's the documentary, Who Killed the Electric Car? And mm -hmm. Ford had this completely electric, not a hybrid, but completely electric battery-powered truck mm -hmm. in the 90s that got like 60-mile ranges. I mean, you talk about a Tesla killer. We already had it 30 years ago, yeah. right? And we're still at square one. So, you know, I think we're still going to be at square one in another 30 years. Yeah. And then, you know, that's not even considering the whole peak oil thing either. Yeah. Um, but so I think the whole AI and electric cars and all those technologies come in. Yes, it is, but I think that people will adapt and think, you know, you're gonna need people to you're gonna need people to clean those robots, helping people out in Walmart. You're gonna need people to program them to replace the parts with them, you know. So it's yeah. just yes, it is on the one hand, you know, I can't stand when I call a company and it's AI bought on the other end of the line and yeah. that drives me crazier than anything. So, so I so I said, uh, when, so I sorry to interrupt. So would you prefer a automated service that only gives you the press one, press two, press three, or would you rather call to somebody in say the Middle East or India and you can't understand a word they're saying? Which one would you prefer? <laughs> That's a tough one. That's a tough one because I've had those calls with India, and yeah. you know that's they're not, you know. And then and that was before we had broadband, right? And it's yeah. like, you know, oh, I need you to unplug your computer, and it's like, yeah. wait a second, you know, if I unplug my my modem, then how am I going to talk to you on this phone call? Because yeah. it's either the internet or it's the phone call. Yeah. So, uh, but I, I feel you. You know, I've had Dell tech support from India, and it yeah. was just terrible. Yeah, but I don't know. You know, I immediately just start saying operator until I get somebody because yeah. I don't like the AI. I mean, maybe yeah. I talk poorly or I don't know what it is. Yeah, interesting, man. Yeah, so me personally, uh, you know, knowing that it's just a part of it, we're the it's just part of evolution. We're evolving. Mm -hmm. We moved out of the agricultural age into the industrial. Now we're in the technology age, and that means that everyone has to adjust with it or be left behind. So this plays yes. into the whole entrepreneurial aspect. Why? It's important for people to take interest in learning how to become tech savvy with the with the basic things, especially, yes. especially like social media, Facebook, you know, even with a camera, being able to share your opinions and views and thoughts with a camera will might one day be your primary uh, way of making money down the line. So get, you know, you utilizing the technology as your friend will definitely help you as things around you shift. So you're not left behind. And so yeah. I think it's just it's it a is, natural process. And since it's dog eat dog, you know, out there, yes, you've got to work hard to rise above the competition mm -hmm. for whatever is left. You can be sure that you can get right. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. As far as the opportunities that are still there, if AI is overtaking some, because yeah. I think about it this way, right? Like think about like a master pizza baker, mm -hmm. right? You know, a hand tossed pizza tastes way better than a vending machine pizza, mm -hmm. right? The vending yeah. machine pizza might be cheaper. It might be more convenient, but for something that's real and authentic, mm -hmm. you know, there's no comparison, but there's not going to be that many pizza maker jobs. So you got to be the best one at it. Right. Yeah. yeah. So be the best at what you do is basically what's going to be your way of separating yourself uh, from the competitive nature of robotics and AI and everything else. So let's keep it moving right along. Let's get back into the chat. Any questions or any thoughts out there? Let me see. I see a lot of robot cleaning is the future. And so uh, Mark Benjamin. So I guess he's curious of our thoughts on Andrew Yang. And so to get back to that universal basic income or that patriot dividend that he's proposing, I'm of the mindset that I know that in order for the Democratic Party to even have a chance at trying to disrupt or uh, you know keep President Trump from getting a second term, they're going to be offering all types of free things. I don't agree with it, but I do recognize a trend that because of the economy, people will opt in for free stuff, not realizing the consequences of it anyway. So it's not my, my personal opinion on Andrew Yang doesn't really matter. It's just that he's doing what he feels he needs to do in order to get a vote. So giving people free stuff will get you a vote. Now, when you get the money, now the biggest thing is, 
you know, the, the biggest problem with that thousand is that thousand will not be enough because at some point you're going to read, you're going to need 1200 and then 1500. You're going to always need to up the ante because of our monetary system in general, because you got a debt based system with the, with, with digits and paper that can be brought into existence for out of no reasons, just for unlimited supply. You're going to always need more. So that thousand won't satisfy people's needs. It's going to create a problem that they won't be able to reverse. So Andrew Yang, entrepreneur, million dollar billionaire guy, I'm sure he intends well, but unless he's actually coming out of his own money to do that, he's talking about using the government and we're, we're trying to get away from dependency on a government and the bigger and growing the government even more because if they give you $1,000, that means they're going to be able to control more of your life than you willing to, than you are probably willing to, to give up. So that's my whole thought. And, you know, like with Alaska, if you're in, I don't know exactly how this works, right? Mm -hmm. When I was in the military, I knew a couple of people that acquired Alaskan residency because I guess there's some sort of oil dividend that yeah. they get, right? Yeah. But th but my point there is, you know, that doesn't make any difference because that money is already spent, mm -hmm. right? So, mm -hmm. you know, you're just printing up the money and putting it into circulation. It's not going to help because, like you said, it's a debt-based system. Prices are rising. The money's already going to be spent. Mm -hmm. And we already see that because, you know, I don't see this oil dividend in Alaska making a huge difference one way or another to stimulate the economy. Yeah. If anything, all it's going to do is maintain, right? Yeah. And, but well, yeah. we know that's not going to happen once it goes on a large scale in the whole 50 states. Yeah, very true, man. So that's the biggest thing is, you know, we, and it's unfortunate that the, the Democratic Party in general are, are going to really push the free concept. And people don't really realize the consequences of the word free. Because I don't know about you, Paul. I ain't really came across many things labeled free that didn't have some type of uh, uh, hidden uh, motive behind it or some type of consequence that you had, to, you had to give up. Something you had to give up in order to get that free. And so I remember even like even vacationing, like if you go down to like Mexico, Cancun, they'll give you a free uh, voucher for all you want. But you got to give them an entire day of your time. <laughs> and so you got to see, was that entire day of my time worth a free this? Uh, depending on what your schedule is, it might be. But you always got to give something in order to, to receive. And by by people clat, latching on to the word free, they're going to give up more of their freedoms that they probably are not aware they even have at this point, And it won't become obvious until they lose them. And that's yes. in my sense there. <laughs> yes, exactly. Because... Because right when, when we're talking about the government doing programs, it's always the opposite of the intended result, right? So mm -hmm. when you have a war on poverty, you have more people that are poor. When mm -hmm. you have a war on drugs, you have more of a drug problem. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, if you're giving out free money, that money, you know, whatever the opposite of free is, that's probably what the end result is going to be. Yeah, which basically saying, so, so especially with Andrew Yang, the thought is, uh, it, it said, so Lena says, Yang said, no strings attached. But yet, Lena, that, that right there is a, a good way of making it sound like it could be helpful. But the thing is, if $1,000 is given to everybody, some people will utilize it for good. Other people will become more so dependent upon that. And it might it low-key be, become a handicap to them. Like if you know you got $1,000 every month, it could be a deterrent from you actually going out and being productive with yourself. Because you can say, I got 1000 anyway. And you'll, you'll take you'll abuse that privilege of so-called free. And I think more of society, especially here in America, because we're so privileged and I ain't going to say lazy, but over the over the last several decades, I believe we've become very complacent and relaxed in our work ethic. And a good way of looking at that is because a lot of foreigners come to this land with nothing and they end up owning and operating a lot more than us, you know, native Native Americans that are born here. Uh, have and can actually do so i think it'll end up hurting a lot of people and then also going to play into the whole drug war all the addictions people going to use that money for the for evil yeah i don't know but then there'll be some that are in the know such as us here white right now which will say go out and get medals you know go go get medals or go get whatever it is that appreciates in value that could be helpful for those yeah. in the meantime yeah yeah i every Dollar that thousand dollars is going to go to silver. I'll tell you that. Yeah. So go ahead and write those checks if they want. I would treat it like <laughs> I never even received it, but be getting my weight up heavily <laughs> in metal form. So, yeah. And, and I imagine if more people did that, that could be the difference maker in the price of gold and silver and all the other metals. Probably hit a little spike and probably appreciate a little bit getting some mainstream attention. What do you think? 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, <laughs> yeah, um, man. yeah, go ahead. Uh, it just reminded me of one thing that I remember hearing from the debates, mm-hmm. and this was in the 2016 debates. I can't remember if this was the first, second, or third debate. Candidate Trump didn't answer the question. Candidate Hillary did, but the question was, you know, um, you've got, and I don't remember. I'm paraphrasing, but it was like you've got. Uh, Medicare and Medicaid spending, you've got Social Security spending, you've got veteran spending, you've got federal retiree pension programs, you've got all of this spending. Mm-hmm. Are you going to, who, who are you going to decide to cut when there's not enough money to pay everyone? Are you going to cut somebody off? And Hillary Clinton just flat out said no, right? Candidate Trump didn't even answer the question, mm-hmm. but it just goes to show you, you know, when you're talking about the dependency, right? You know, once they start getting that money, Nobody wants to get cut off. Everybody gets used to it. And then no politician wants to cut it off once it starts either. Mm-hmm. You know, so so that's just a secondary point that I wanted to bring up that it's opening up a whole new can of worms yeah. that we really don't need open because we can't even handle the worms we already got on our table. Yeah. And, and, and to piggyback off that, just the very nature of an entity giving something that it didn't earn or produce itself is a promise that I think we're going to experience real soon will, that will be reneged upon. And so we got a lot of things that, you know, so so touchy subjects that I've come across quite often is social security itself and, and it being labeled now, like even political figures now are labeling it as an entitlement. And so a lot of people say, I put in, I paid, you took that out of my check, my entire work life, you owe me. And so given that the government is already in the negative in all of those areas, they're not, you know, the younger generation, especially everybody our age and younger, is not really working and contributing. So there's going to have to be a renege on some promises. And so given a free thousand dollars a month, there's a promise that one day will be met with the idea that where's the funds going to come from? Because Amazon, Google, Google, Facebook, all those big corporations, they're only going to allow themselves to be taxed. Especially if they're not being taxed heavily now, what makes you think they're going to stick around and continue to be taxed excessively to meet the needs of a lot of people who are going to eventually abuse the system? So there exactly. will there will be a massive reneging of promises sooner than later on free stuff and stuff that you think are is owed to you as far as all the things you've contributed into. So that's just my opinion, and that's uh, yeah. That's a good point, too, because I think it's Burger King that relocated their headquarters to Canada. So they're a Canadian company now. So you start pushing these companies too much. And exactly. They're going to pack their bags and say, all right, well, we're done with this. Um, And, you know, because so ultimately, right, everything costs twice as much and takes twice as long to happen. Right. So Mm -hmm. ultimately, this is going to cost way more than the government's even estimating. Mm -hmm. So ultimately, it's just going to turn into printing up the money. And, you know, you can't print wealth. Right. You can Mm -hmm. only create wealth. By two ways, basically, you can grow food and sell it, right? Mm-hmm. That, that's creating wealth if you have a surplus. Yeah. Or you can mine it out of the ground, right? So you can mine coal, or you can mine gold or silver or platinum or whatever it is mm-hmm. that you're mining out of the ground. Mm-hmm. Or you can manufacture something, right? You can take something and put it together and make something with it. Yeah. Or in today's era, you can create a service that somebody needs. Yeah. But just as far as giving everybody a thousand dollars, that is not creating anything other than inflation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I agree in a, in a sad way. So people, I always tell people, if the people want it, give them give them what they want, and they'll realize after the fact that they really didn't want it after all. But it's unfortunate, and that's where everything is progressing. So I'm not surprised that candidates offering free this, free that, and to to even go any further. If you see any questions in, in the chat, feel free because I can ramble on forever. But to piggyback on our free idea, free schooling. If everybody gets a chance to go to school for free, then what value does that edu- education actually have? And so if you are guaranteed to go to school for free, I would assume the prices, you know, the quality of education will go down drastically because here you're going to have you're going to have to then probably put a cap on professors income. And I already heard a lot of professors are getting out of, you know, studying or or, or teaching at that level because of the stipend or the, the, the lack of pay. And so if you got unmotivated professors because they've been capped off, what's the quality of information they're going to be sharing with you? So ultimately, when you get a certificate, you may not get the highest grade of education, information, period, to even be able to take into the workforce. And then the last note, I'm going to shut my mouth on it because I can go forever, is that once you get your certificate, will there be a, a, a job market that is booming in this country 
especially in the days ahead, to where you'll be able to enter into the workforce and pick up and have the type of life your parents or your grandparents had. And I'm, I'm, Great I'm, points. I'm, Great points. It right and, there. <laughs> and one of the problems is when everybody gets this, and mm -hmm. I see this with my own kids in school, right? So, you know, no child left behind. Well, what exactly does that mean? What that means <laughs> is the professor, right, in the case of college, yeah. or the teacher in the case of public schools, which my kids are in, yeah. that means that they have to teach to the very lowest standard. So mm -hmm. the person who... Quite frankly, the dumbest person in the class, that's the level of education that the whole group is going to get. Yeah. So, you know, and then and then when we talk about, you know, global telecommunications and global transportation, mm -hmm. if everybody's going to college and getting a degree, how in the heck are they going to compete in the 21st century with actually people that have to study and learn hard stuff? Yeah. And that's the thing. Like, OK, I'm, I saw I saw I, I'm going to unzip. But, you know, <laughs> unzip, Mike. Unzip. <laughs> well, I said so if everything is free, then. The incentive of having to sacrifice and give to receive as far as like, you know, putting in the time or making that investment in yourself, that whole thing is thrown out the door because what really will, what will be your goal or your ambition to achieve more if you're being given everything? Like there has to be some, some reward to your efforts. And yes. so the, 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 all this free stuff is really going to ruin the development of the younger generation. Because, you know, they are, especially when it comes to sports, we already got the whole idea that everyone's a winner. And there's yes. only one winner in the game of basketball. Second right. place, nobody remembers. Third place, who? Like, so if everyone wins in the end, what are you working towards? So That's, I'm, right. I'm, That's right. Nobody <laughs> loses and everybody wins. Paul, I'm done. I'm, let's, let's move on. <laughs> nobody loses and everybody wins. Yeah, man, this is some good, um, this is some good back and forth. I, I wanted to, before getting into the chat a little bit more, yeah. um, I wanted to – bring up something that I just was um, alerted to yesterday and I did not know this, but, mm -hmm. um, and this is not being talked about in many places. You know, we hear about threats of closing down the Southern border. Mm -hmm. um, we know about the trade wars that are going on, but just for the first time ever, um, Mexico has become the largest trading partner on a dollar basis with the United States for the months of January and February of this year, mm -hmm. passing China. Mm -hmm. Um, so I just wanted to throw that out there. Um, I find that very interesting, especially with all the things that are going on mm -hmm. with this border relation. Yeah. Behind the scenes, we can see really how important the relationship between the two countries are. Um, I didn't want to talk a whole lot about that other than the fact that, you know, there's things going on behind the scenes that we're not seeing. Yeah. Now, that is so that particular subject matter there, is that up on the silverdoctors.com uh, news site? Um, yeah, in my article today for the Wednesday update, I uh, talked on that among other things. Okay, is that the is that um, the Trump? Is that the awkward Trump and Lopez? Is that is that is, is it in that one? Yes, it's in that one. Okay, so um, I'll pull that's going to be a controversial article as well because I also talk about you know that the border crisis, in my opinion, is a manufactured crisis. Um, yeah. And I say that because what does the United States do, right? We go around the world and we manufacture crisis, right? I mean, that's literally our modus operandi, yeah. right? That's empire, right? That's endless war. So for some reason, people think, oh, well, the United States would never do that against itself. Well, obviously they are. Yeah. But my point is, you know, even, you know, if you think there's a border crisis going on at the border, and I lived on the border for nine years, yeah. right? I've traveled to Mexico extensively through the border. Yeah. But even if there's a border crisis going on, um, there's still so much more behind the scenes where Mexico and the United States need each other, especially mm -hmm. we hear about, you know, all of these problems that the farmers are having because they're not being able to export certain, uh, you know, uh, produce and certain meats to China, for example. Guess yeah. where that surplus is going? It's going into Mexico, right? Mm -hmm. And that's alleviating some of these pressures. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. So, uh, yeah. So, uh, so that, so I don't even know, really knowing much about that. That's very interesting that you know the the trade is a difference with uh, with Mexico. And so I'm thinking like, so for China wise. So I thought China was our biggest. Uh, was it? Yeah. Ex yeah. So th to hear that, it's like that's kind of different. So I'm thinking like, you know, why is that? How did that come about? And so where does that put Mexico? It puts Mexico in a very favorable position in the days ahead. And just the inter on the international scene. So that's going to be something uh, of interest there. It does. Very, very it promising does. for the Mexicans down there. So on, on another note, um, I saw today an article uh, about, let me actually pull it up, um, about, um, uh, what was it, uh, that President Trump is looking to send armed, I think I said armed forces 
down to the border now. And so you know about the whole militia. What, what's your thoughts on the whole militia since we're touching on Mexico? The fact mm-hmm. that the 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 it was a patriot, U.S. patriot constitution and militia, whatever, are actually stopping migrants on the border there and detaining them. What are your thoughts on that? There is a. I, I haven't followed that story. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I know that they've detained, like the FBI has arrested this group or whatever. Yeah. Um, but here's my point about that. Um, there is a lot of disinformation out there. Mm-hmm. Just yesterday, I saw a story on CNN that was talking about um, Mexican soldiers who thought they were on the U.S. side of the border, um, like disarmed and detained two American soldiers. And let me tell you, first of all, right, mm-hmm. we have something that's called the Border Patrol. Yeah. That's who patrols the border, yeah. right? And second of all, even if the United States Army was going to patrol the border, yeah. which they're not doing, they're yeah. not going to send out two people to go patrol the border. <laughs> and third of all, Mexican Army is just not going to have rifles in the United States detaining Americans. So this whole thing, yeah. there is a lot of this information. And I, don't, I really don't know what it's leading up to. Yeah. Um, some, another thing that's interesting, that's another thing that's breaking is, uh, you know, in the news is about 1600 this is over on zero head 1600 um migrants they call them have been dumped in the city of las cruces uh new mexico now the interesting thing about that is beto o'rourke right as in robert francis o'rourke as Mm -hmm. in you know the guy who's running for president his district is el paso right Mm -hmm. so if this whole crisis at the border wasn't a manufactured crisis right Mm -hmm. wouldn't they dump those into el paso to force beto the candidate to take some action to take some policy stances Mm -hmm. right to Mm -hmm. to kind of put him in the hot seat why are they going to go a few miles down the road and dump them in las cruces new mexico so there's a lot of disinformation yeah there's a lot of things that are being thrown out there by the mainstream media, like that whole army being detained, right? Yeah. If you look on the, the army's website, you know, there's no press release about that mm-hmm. soldiers being detained, you know, and of course it was, you know, undisclosed sources tell CNN that two soldiers were detained <laughs> and the American side, because the Mexicans thought they were still in Mexico and, you know, no soldiers going to accidentally stumble into Mexico, right? Yeah. So, so there's a lot of stuff going on. And for some reason, the other thing about that is you're trying to keep it front and center, right? Like, yeah. why is it so front and center? Um, yeah. You know, yeah. I, I, my first thought was, oh, my God, you know, is a U.S. soldier going to get killed or a Mexican soldier going to get killed on the border? I mean, this is where this is leading, I think. Yeah, and I, that's but, the type uh, of stuff that could happen since it's such a touchy situation down there. And so, yeah, that, that, it goes back to the whole the, the wall aspect. And so every time I hear Trump speak, he mentions that they're making progress on portions of the wall. And so I'm thinking, like, you know, what initially started all those thousands of people even moving this way? They were even coming from Honduras. They were coming right. from Guatemala. So what initially gave them the idea last year to even start moving is my question. So clearly, I think the political forces that are, are – of the same mindset in any way. So the whole Republican Democrat is all from, they all from the Ivy league school of thought and one world agenda. Somebody went down there and said, Hey, let's get y'all up here. We'll pay for you guys to come up to, to give us this chaos and chaos confusion at this particular time. So it gives us something to, to talk about. It gives us some issues to argue about all distractions, of course, but it's unfortunate. Yes. They're playing with people's lives though. That's the problem. That's what bothers me most. Yes. Cause the, because the U S military, we, we go anywhere we want. We do anything we want. Right. To whoever we want. So you don't think we could have, you know, I think the term I used this morning was nip it in the bud. Right. Right there in Honduras or Nicaragua or wherever it is that it's starting out. Right. We could have gone there and we could have stopped that if we really wanted to. And it's not really Mexico's fault. They got to go through a couple of countries before they even get to Mexico. Yeah. Right. So so there's more to this story going on. I mean, I personally think that, you know, the wall is. You know, basically turning the United States into one giant FEMA camp. Mm-hmm. But I don't even want to go down that rabbit hole today, so we'll save that for another another day. Fair enough, fair enough. Well, everybody, it's been great hanging out. We're approaching yes. that uh, almost a fifty minute point, and so wow. I appreciate mm-hmm. you guys uh, sharing let's your thoughts. A, let's take a couple questions, Mike, since we uh, all right. Let's uh, do so it. We we'll get to some. Let's do it. Uh, let me see. Let me know what comes of what you see. I'll thumb through it as well. I see more so more back and forth amongst those that are watching us than actual question marks at the end of statements. So let me see. Oh, so I'll, I'll put it like this. 
as we draw to the end, are there any questions we may not have gotten to that you want to you know, put in front of us and that'll help us be able to answer or share our thoughts on some things? So feel free, last second or two. And while you're doing that, since you're thumbing through or typing, don't be afraid to hit that thumbs up button beneath the video. Show your support for the channel so that uh, more people can find out what we're doing over here. Trying to grow and, and help uh, the people in the Silver Doctors community you know, inter interact with each other and, and just grow the whole community feel here. And so what else? The plan was to scare them to submission. The plan is war with Iran. So yeah, between Iran, I haven't heard much talk about us going down to Venezuela lately. So that I'm not sure if Russia and China presence there scared off uh, the powers of be or whatever it might be. So not sure. But Paul, I don't see many questions. So I'm going to leave it at that. Mm -hmm. So, so someone says, when, when, when's the turn on precious metals? And so that's a, I'll let you take that one. Go ahead. What are your thoughts on when is there, when, when will there be a turn on precious metals? But that's the $64,000 question. <laughs> they have been hitting gold and silver every single day. I don't think they hit it this morning, although I wasn't digging into the charts quite as much mm -hmm. this morning, but I do know for the past six days, and I didn't go back for the past six days just because it's so egregious, but between eight or 10 in the morning, generally speaking, the minute COMEX opens or a couple minutes before 8.30 or at 8.20 or mm -hmm. at 9 o'clock, they've been hitting gold and silver pretty hard. Um, you know, when will it turn? It turns when the physical supply becomes an issue because, mm -hmm. you know, like we said before, they can print unlimited paper to short unlimited contracts on the market. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with unlimited money and unlimited paper contracts, it's just simply a waiting game at that point. Yeah. Um, so it really has to be the physical market. Or a reset, right? I mean, that would happen after you know the hyperinflation and the and the major currency problems. Yeah. Um, yeah. As far as when do they turn? You know, this has been platinum's up twelve point five percent on the year, gold and silver down on the year. You know, and everybody had high hopes going into two thousand nineteen, and I still do for the prices of gold and silver come the end of the year. Mm -hmm. But I mean, the first three months have been absolutely brutal. Okay, so so I agree with that as well. So someone asked about oil sanctions on on Iran. And so uh, the sanctions, everything that everything to do with Iran goes back to an agenda from decades ago about our need to influence and basically control every single country in that region. So whatever is done to Iran right now is all a part of that agenda. So they're going to sanction them to do they're going to do anything they can to starve that country from the global economy to then be able to go in there and either steal oil or play, pace a pay, or place a private centralized bank there to join the, to join the rest of the central banking crew. So that's my thoughts on that. So it's not not a surprise, and eventually we will probably go in there and right. Yeah. Plus, well, plus you got the whole mess between you know Iran, Saudi Arabia, Israel, yeah. all of that whole geopolitical war thing yeah. too. That's so a hot area. Right um, now. I did see one thing about uh, something about like do. Is there any concern at all in government circles about PM manipulation? Um, I mean, I don't think so. You know, yeah. uh, I don't, don't think don't, they, don't, I think that the topic is avoided, right? Yeah. You know, <laughs> um, whether it's the Fed or whether, it, you know, just a couple people, you know, like the Mooney out of West Virginia, mm -hmm. he's like one of the only people that's actually posing important questions, yeah. right? Questions about, hey, Constitution says gold and silver is supposed to be our money. What's going on here? Why are you printing up all this fiat currency that's debt based? Yeah. You know, there's nobody asking those questions. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like if they're, like his, his 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 the bill he's attempting to put forth to basically make government make gold. I think is you know money again, which it already is money for those that are in the know. I, I don't never see any movement from the government to reinstate what they intentionally intended to get away from. So I don't ever see them acknowledging metals, period, just because that puts a clamp on them. They can't run deficits. They can't do what they do if they are being handcuffed by sound money. So never expect anything of truth from that source there, in my opinion. So that's why it's up to you to get your own weight up and become your own. I, I don't like when people say become your own central bank because people, central banks bring nothing. They bring nothing into something or they bring something out of nothing. We can't do that. We got to go work for our steel. But you can become your own, and my, this is my opinion, your own personal hedge fund as far as how you strategically place your own financial assets for yourself and your family and of that nature. So that's just my opinion. So, um, But yeah, Paul, half dollar. It's been great having you uh, joining us for this live on air. 
And uh, any any uh, I was gonna let it go right there because we if I if I ask another question or or take another question <laughs> we gonna keep going longer. So everybody, it's been great. You guys tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed the back and forth. As always, don't be afraid to hit the thumbs up button beneath this video so more people can find out what's going on over here. We'll be back next Wednesday, same time, same place. And during the week, if there's questions or topics, feel free to comment on any of the interviews or the news updates I'll post on the channel so we can make sure we address them. And then or email news at silverdoctors.com. More important, yeah, news at silverdoctors.com. So we'll try to get to that and incorporate that into the channel. I want to definitely make sure we make you guys a part of this experience here so we can all stay educated, informed, and share our opinions because I think, you know, everyone here watching has a unique perspective that uh, could definitely be used as far as it uh, presented to the world. So once again, it's been great hanging out. Appreciate you guys for joining us. Be blessed, be safe. We'll see you guys next week. Be on the lookout for some more interviews and news updates from myself and the rest of the team here at Silver Doctor. So Enjoy the rest of your day. Peace.